Hey everyone, today we are installing a drain line coming out of the basement. This is so the sump pump doesn't have to run every five minutes in the springtime. Yep, it's coming right down. It's going to connect with the storm drain on the street. All right, so here's the sump pump's old drain. Look at that, it's only got an inch of soil on it. So the pumps had to pump it all the way up and out of the building. Yep, these things in the springtime after the snow thaw would be running every five minutes. And you can see down there, there used to be a perimeter drain on the exterior of the house. Now there's a new perimeter drain inside that collects the water and it's going to send it right out. But the sump pumps are going to be left in place just in case there's ever an ice dam at the far end of this. It's only a four inch pipe. It's possible. But also typically when it's that cold, the groundwater is very low. Like if this was springtime, this would be flooded. Yep, it would be just absolutely flooded. And this right here is a clean out, just in case there's ever a clog or if sediment from very low flow gets stuck in there, it can be blasted out with a garden hose. Because this sump pump turns on every five minutes and every time it would do so, it would release maybe three to five gallons of water each time it would turn on. Three to five gallons, so that's, would say, a gallon a minute. That's a small trickle. This is also a pretty good pitch, too. Pretty steep pitch coming out of here, also. It's good. So right there, that was a pretty tough one going in there. I'm not the one who did that, but with a shovel, it had to go way in there to reach the sump pump pit. Because you see how far away the sump pump pit actually is. So the shovel had to get way in there to actually get to the pit. Yep. This is going to take away a lot of my worries I have every spring. I always worry those pumps are going to fail. Because this building here, I bought it as an abandoned building. It was abandoned for many years. The owners went uh, bankrupt. Well, actually, the owners died and the inheritance couldn't afford it and went bankrupt. So that's basically what happened. So the house sat abandoned. I got the place. All the people's paperwork was still in there. Basically everything was in there. I had to clean it out. It was a hoarder situation, mouse infested. It was a disgusting time a few years back. But everything's going along nice. Because I know in the winter time, like winter time, I could come out here and I could dig two feet. This is a four foot trench. If I dug two feet in the springtime, it would fill with water. The water table around that time of year is definitely above the basement floor, and this just takes away lots of worries. Anyways, I was talking about, I went through the paperwork that was left in the house, like the old file cabinets, as I was throwing everything away. I found out the basement here had to be refinished in 2007 and 2014 because of a flood. Two separate floods. Basement was flooded. I can see water lines around the inside concrete. It flooded with at least a foot of water, destroying sheetrock. Uh, when I got the place, there was a lot of black mold behind the walls and stuff. Uh, I just tore it out, and I'm just going to have an unfinished basement. I don't really care about that. I have one room in the basement that's finished, and that is my New England Wildlife YouTube channel studio. That's the only finished room in the basement. Other than that, I gutted it. So I think this is going to work out nicely. Some pump will never have to kick in, and if this clogs, there's a sump pump ready there. There's actually two sump pumps ready, and if both main sump pumps fail, there's even a battery-operated one I had put in a few years back. But also, this right here, 
told insurance company I no longer have to get the sump pumps inspected every year because for my coverage of appliances and walls in the basement, uh, I've been paying extra and I've, as a requirement of the insurance, I had to get the pumps inspected every single year. And with the inspection, the guy also cleaned it. That's a few hundred dollars a year I no longer have to deal with. So, this is going good. Let's hop down for a moment and I'll show you what's going on. Um, I'm gonna not, uh, I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to do this. Cause I don't want to step too close to the edge. Don't want it to collapse. I'm just gonna walk in from the far end. Alrighty, so. You see the trench down here is only like two feet. As it gradually, oh look at this. It's crying, the tree. As we get closer to the building, it gets that four feet. Just being careful not to mess up the compacting around the pipe. It's at a very nice pitch. I am keeping all the rocks these guys got out of here. Now you can see in here, you get the light on. It's very wet. And that's the sump pump pit in there. I will show you from the other side. This right here, because there's no easy way to compact in there, right here beyond is going to be filled with expanding foam. And this French drain thing. That's, look at that. It's like partially crushed. I wonder if that even works. I ran into that once in the front when I was planting a tree. Wow, PVC pr prices went way up. Contractor called me and said... Um, that usually one of these eight foot pieces of four inch pipe is usually 20 bucks. They're up to 60 now. Amazing how prices are going. So, all right, here we come into the basement. Here's where those two sump pump pipes were going out. They pour into a pipe, connect in a T, and they go off away from the house, only about 50 feet. This new pipeline is going to go about 150 feet out to the street. And here's what we got down here. The pit. Got a light on. All right, down inside here, um, which one's the battery? I'm not exactly sure which one's the battery, but you see, obviously, the lower one is going to turn on first. If that one fails or malfunctions, obviously, this one will come on second, and I do believe this one would be the battery pump, so it's not constantly running it. Um, you see down here, the floats. You got this big float. It climbs to the top of this metal pole. Then it clicks this bar, which is a switch. And that's how it turns on. The lower one here, yes, the water probably will make it come up the pole a little bit, but it won't click the switch on. It'll be trickling out this pipe is what you saw outside. This pipe right here is collecting water from this perimeter drain of the basement. See how it's sticking out? That goes around the entire building between behind the walls and stuff. If water was to trickle down the wall, it would collect it. I've never had a problem with trickling down the wall, but it collects what's seeping in from the walls. Now, this right here is an alarm system. It sounds like a smoke detector. Is it going to work for us? Yes, it does work. Uh, if the water got up to about this point, a few inches below the floor, it'll set that alarm off telling you, if you're home, that the pump's not working. But now, these pumps, hopefully, will never have to turn on again, but they will stay here as a safety precaution. You can actually see some water down inside here, but I don't believe that's the water table. Um... I just, I think the pit just doesn't have holes in the bottom. It's pretty cool. And this is the giant battery backup I had to install a few years ago to ensure there wouldn't be any flooding if we went without power for a while. I was told that if this thing was turning on at its maximum in the spring every five minutes, this would probably only last a few days. Otherwise, You'd probably get a good week out of that one battery. And in the meantime, if power was going to be out for a really long time, we could rent a generator. Now there's no worry about any flooding again, unless there's an ice dam. But that time of year typically is not when the water table's high. So no need to worry. Might even put some heat cables inside this thing, such as you put on the rooftop.
All right, everybody, it's morning. It looks like we had a mole friend. See that? A mole was down here. Oh, having a lot of fun. Look at this. Look at all these little tunnels. Goes right through. Yeah. Literally every little hill it's going through. It made holes through all the compressed dirt. Oh, wow, look at this. It's a good thing I came down here to look for friends that were trapped. There's a toad. We'll get him on the way back. Wow, look at this. Was this all the mole? Wow, the ground is so loose here from the mole making holes. Yep. I'm looking for our buddy I saw from up top. There's a massive slug I came down here to rescue. There he is. These guys are extremely slimy. And usually if you pick them up, you want your hands to be wet. If you try to pick them up with dry hands, it will leave you very slimy until you wash your hands off. I don't like to touch them by hand, but... <sighs> Not so bad, because I didn't touch the bottom of them. Now we gotta find that other dude. Look at this. Old tree roots. Rotting. See up against the building? This is an old tree root. Tree's been dead for years, that's all all rotten. Just looking here for friends. No frogs or anything. Something was sure burrowing in here last night. Let's go find that toad so he doesn't get buried alive. There he is. He's a friend. Probably gonna pee in my hand, but I'm gonna keep him here while we go through the rest of the trench. Look for anyone else who may have fallen in. See lots more mole holes. Oh, gotta go through some pretty stiff roots. One of them is still leaking like crazy. Nope, it doesn't look like we have any more friends in here. Whoa, but look at this. We saw this yesterday. We just drew it back in the hole. That's a real old dinner plate. It's not like the new ones. It's like made out of glass. And here's the end. We haven't continued yet. Today we'll continue it. And the end of it here is going to be the plunge pool. By the time it's done... We're gonna try to dig it six feet deep. We're hoping the ground table, the water table fills it up naturally and there's a little pond here. Definitely in springtime, it'll be up at capacity, almost to ground level. Got a little bit of an optical illusion here. I thought there may have been a little mess up, but nope, it's got that slight pitch out. All right, there's the clean out, all buried back in and compacted. It still has to be raked out and seed planted. Got a bunch of rocks right here, which are gonna be moved down to the plunge pool then at the end here's a bunch more rocks 